Sony just announced their brand new 16-35 F4G series lens, so I figured I'd give you guys my Vong opinion on it. Now, I don't have this lens, but I hope I can still provide some perspective for those of you who have mild curiosity for it. We're currently traveling right now, so hopefully we can get one to review for our next trip. And we actually have quite a bit of time for this, right? This lens isn't coming out until July 2022 due to the supply chain. It's currently like, what, March right now? So we're four months ahead. But I'll tell you this, if you're 60 to 70% sure that you will be getting this lens, it's just best to place a pre-order for it right now because you can always cancel it before it ships, but it's better to have your name on the list even if you're half serious about it. Now, if you already wrote off this lens as a vlogger lens just because it's a lightweight ultra wide angle lens, just hang on a sec, all right? Because it goes way beyond vlogging. Even though they market this lens as a hybrid lens, it favors heavily for professional video shooters, and we'll talk about why in this video. Feel free to use the time codes in this video to navigate to the certain section that interests you the most, but I'll go ahead and knock off all the features in this video. So the upcoming 16-35 is a G-Series F4 internal power zoom full frame lens, and the key takeaway is that it is incredibly light, souped up with the latest lens tech for the best autofocus and manual focus performance, while still maintaining great optical quality, hence the G-Badge. Now, it's the size and weight is what appeals me the most. It's only 353 grams, which is about as heavy as a standard size can soda. The way that it zoom, it's done internally, so the length and the center of gravity remains the same from 16 to 35. Already, you know this is gonna be great for gimbal users and for anyone who's baller enough to get the new Sony AirPeak drone. But I think A7C users in particular are really going to enjoy this lens. So it's been eight years since the first F4 16 and 35 Zeiss lens, and in that eight years time, we had a ton of upgrades in the lens tech department. Namely, the Extreme Dynamic Linear Motor. This lens has four of them. Basically, the autofocus for both stills and video will be able to keep up with the camera's movement. Say you're tracking a moving subject while towards the camera at a wide open aperture, the camera will send those focus distance instructions to the lens and the lens will pull focus to keep the subject in focus the closer they get. The way that modern Sony lenses autofocuses, it thrusts back and forth. Rather than years ago, it was rotational so things were slower and less accurate. And of course, the modern day lens focus tech is silent as well. Now the interesting thing about this lens is that it's a power zoom lens, meaning the zooming can be done electronically and consistently where as zoom barrels that most of us are used to, like this lens that I have right here, are solely on the user moving the ring back and forth, so the motion might not be as smooth, which will reflect in the footage. Up until now, we only had a couple of power zoom lenses. Some of them you might be familiar with, like the uh, APS-C kit lens, the 16 to 50, as well as the 18 to 105. Now, if you're coming more from the cinema side, you might be familiar with the 28 to 135 lens. So with consistent zooming, it just looks more professional, right? We can do it in television shows, movies, movies, as well as more professional polished internet videos like YouTube. Now, in combination with the extreme dynamic linear motor that we were talking about earlier, we can perform something as intricate as a dolly zoom effect, where as we move the camera back while zooming in, the focus will seemingly not shift, giving us a very solid result. Now, many gimbal users have attempted this with their gimbal's focus zoom control mechanism, like we did this five years ago. But like I mentioned, because it's more so on the user, those results are not as consistent. But with this new 16 to 35, hopefully it will make things a hundred times easier. Now, a few Sony cameras will have the TW zoom rocker built in to capitalize on the power zoom, mainly the FX3 and what I have right here, the ZV-E10, which is kind of blown out. I'll cut to a B-roll of this. Now, if you don't have a zoom rocker on your camera, you can program your custom buttons to have it or simply use the rocker on the lens instead. Now, in case you can't physically control the camera, let's say it's on a gimbal, on a drone, or a tripod that's 10 feet away, you can also do it wirelessly via an infrared or Bluetooth remote, this Sony Bluetooth grip tripod that I have right here, or even with your phone. And that should expand our operability of the zoom. Now on this channel, we talk a lot about clear image zoom. Clear image zoom is different from digital zoom because it's using Sony's Pixel technology to enlarge the image using algorithms to make the image more clear without losing too much details. So you can power zoom to 35 millimeters, and if you have clear image zoom enabled, you can actually zoom in one and a half times in 4K, giving you roughly a 50 millimeter focal length 
Or if you're in 1080p HD, you get two times the clear image zoom, giving you a 70 millimeter focal length. I actually have a video demonstrating this with the 16 and 35 G Master. You should totally check it out after this video. But from the power zoom to the clear image zoom, it keeps that consistency in speed. And you can control that speed in your settings between one to eight. And yes, you can also twist the zoom ring on that lens to zoom as well. While it's not as fast as a snap zoom like this, Sony says it's still pretty fast and responsive. But the question that I have for this lens is, does the focal length on the lens get reset when our camera powers off or goes to sleep? Because that's one of the quirks that photographers especially did not like about the 18 105 So let's just say maybe, for example, we set the lens at a certain focal length. 24 millimeter. On a lens like this, if I set it at 24 millimeter, power off my camera and power it back on, I'm still at 24 millimeter. But when it comes to power zoom lenses, if I set it at 24 millimeter, turn off my camera and power it back on, it will reset to 16 millimeters. That can get kind of annoying, especially when you have all of your settings already dialed in, we have everything set up, but when we power back on our camera, we're not at the focal length that we wanted it at. So hopefully someone already addressed this in one of their videos, but if not, I'll report back in my review. Now, in a similar vein though, which is a positive thing actually, the manual focusing on this lens has a linear response, meaning unlike most mirrorless lenses that uses fly-by-wire focusing mechanism, you can actually do controlled focus pull manually with focus markers on this lens and do repeatable focus pulls, which is amazing for filmmakers. And because this lens is designed for filmmakers and video creators, the focus breathing is minimized. And if you have the a7 IV or the FX3, the new focus breathing compensation will further minimize that as well. That's pretty dope. Now this lens here also has uh, close focusing, which I won't get into too much until I have the lens physically, but let's talk aperture ring. Now this is something that we're used to seeing in prime lenses, but we're starting to see in the zoom lenses as well. I think the first time we started seeing it was the new 70 200 G Master version two. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but they're really catering this to the FX6 and FX9 user because when combined with the internal variable ND, we can go from F4 to F22 and the camera will automatically compensate for the exposure change with the built-in NDs. So we can get this cool, super blurry background to a background that's in focus and vice versa. Man, someday soon, I wish these cameras here will have built-in variable NDs because that would be insane to use. Now, price. I'll throw it up here on the screen because as of shooting this right now, I'm not sure what the price is, but they told us between twelve to fourteen hundred dollars. If it's on the higher end bracket, that puts it nearly the same price as the Zeiss version. Now, during the press presentation, they distinctly said this lens does not replace anything in their line of lenses. This lens here is in a class of its own because it's a power zoom lens. So I don't expect the Zeiss version to have a price drop. Now, I can't say for sure it's an upgrade from the Zeiss though. They say optically it is, but performance, I'm 100% sure that the autofocus on this new lens is way better. So if you're a video shooter, you wanna consider this. We already talked about the amazing autofocus and manual focus features of this lens, but it's also lighter than the Zeiss. 353 grams versus 518 grams. And because it's an internal zoom, unlike the Zeiss, it's great for gimbals and drones because the balance will not shift. Shift. However, if you already have the Zeiss version already and you are doing more photos than you are videos, then you might not have a strong desire to get this lens. Now, I know I'm gonna get asked, how does this lens stack up against the Tamron 17 to 28 f2.8? I might compare it against that, but optically, I think the Sony is gonna be better based on all the reviews and tests I've done comparing third-party lenses against Sony. But I wanna see how the performance stacks up against the Sony because when I tested the Tamron, the autofocus wasn't too shabby, especially for basic needs. Maybe for something more complicated, the Sony will win, but we'll see. On top of that, the new Sony is lighter than the Tamron, 353 grams versus 420 grams. But given the fact that the Tamron is an f2.8, it's understand why it's a little bit heavier, and the Tamron is still going to be very desirable for a lot of folks out there just because of the f2.8. Either way, I'm glad Sony is finally updating their f4 zooms. It's definitely been a while. And they did it very strategically too, whether it's on purpose or by accident, they've given us other ultra-wide angle lenses first before coming back to the f4. If we think about it, we got the 16-35G Master, we got the 12 to 24 in both the F4 and 2.8 variants, and we even got the 20G and the 14 GMs at F1.8. With that said, can we expect a 24 to 70 F4 update? 
and even a 70 to 200 f4 update? I really think so, given the whole power zoom feature they're trying to go for. Might be next year though, but the desire for a lighter lens with all the souped up modern lens tech. Oh yeah, there's definitely a market for lenses like these, especially for someone like me who's doing the whole travel nomadic thing right now. Anything to lessen the weight that I have to carry will always be a good thing, while having these lenses maintain great optical quality. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts. Do any of these factors of this lens appeal to you, whether it's the power zoom, Zoom, the lightness, the internal zoom, etc. Thanks for listening, guys. This has been The Vong Opinion, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Squarespace is an all in one platform to create beautiful websites. No coding knowledge whatsoever. Perfect for people like me because I just want to make YouTube videos for you guys and not have to worry about coding my entire website. Simply just select one of their templates to get started. Every aspect is easily customizable with their drag and drop feature. Whether you're in need of a portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a simple blog, design it with Squarespace. Use my link down below to test it out. And when you're ready to launch your first website or domain, use my code JasonVong to save 10% off. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.